Welcome back, Jeff Frick here with Silicon Angle Networks. We are at the Garden at AT&T Park. I'm here with Stacy Slaughter, the SVP of Communications with the San Francisco Giants. So first off, Stacy, welcome, uh, welcome. Thank you, I'm delighted to be here. So we are standing in front of the world famous San Francisco Giants kale, <laughs> uh, which uh, Hunter Pence took some out a little while ago. But this is the kale garden, a really unique innovation that the Giants put in under the batter's eye, dead center field, probably a space that really wasn't uh, utilized as a effectively before. So we're here to kind of get the update on the garden first sure, and foremost. So tell sure. us about it. What are, what are we standing in? Well, we're standing in about 4,300 square feet of garden space. It's an edible garden. We have herbs, obviously. We have kale, fruits, vegetables uh, that we really use as a gathering place for our fans and also an opportunity to educate the fans about healthy eating and healthy living. So ballparks probably traditionally aren't thought of places that you go for healthy eating. <laughs> so where does that come from and, and, and why is that important to, uh, to the fans here at the Giants? Well, really since day one when we opened AT&T Park, we wanted to do things differently. We wanted this to be a ballpark that was a community gathering point. And in addition to the traditional ballpark fair, we thought what's more San Francisco than, have, than to have really unique food offerings. So we have a crab sandwich, we have sushi here, we have wine tastings, you name it, we have it here. And so the obvious next logical step would to be able to grow some of our own food here and actually serve it as part of the ballpark fair. So do they do they pick a leaf when you order the salad and sure. put it on or is yeah. it done ahead of time? Or Absolutely. More we for have fun. A, an herb table where people can pick herbs and sprinkle it on their flatbread. We have kale, we have strawberries. We want people to interact with the food that's growing out here in the in the garden. And the other interesting thing about this space is it also serves a major purpose for our playing field. Part of the garden actually sits on our sod farm, which is the grass that we harvest to replace divots and other you know worn areas of the field. And, and we also have our batting cage that the players use during batting practice. That's stored out here. So this gives fans not only an up close and personal view of the food they're eating here, it also gives them an up close view of some of the behind the scenes things that go on when we're preparing the field to play. I didn't know about the sod, yeah. the sod farm. <laughs> you can picnic on the sod farm. Oh, you can, uh, awesome. So, uh, so my question is very cool, very innovative, great use of space that you weren't necessarily using before. <laughs> Talk a little bit about the culture of innovation here at the Giants. Who, who came up, let's talk specifically about the garden first. Who, who came up with this idea? Was it a low-level person, mid-level person? And how do they actually get it uh, socialized yeah, in the it. company and actually funded yeah. and executed? Can you well, talk a little bit was, about that process? It was an interesting story. There were a couple different conversations going on, one of which was through the Giants Community Fund, which is our nonprofit foundation where we have kids all over Northern California playing baseball for free through our Junior Giants program. And the folks who are on that board thought, what a great way to teach kids about healthy eating and living by, by creating a garden here at the ballpark where we could bring kids here and teach them how to cook healthy food and to entice them with healthy food. At the same time, um, during the World Series, Hunter Pence was having dinner with our CEO and his wife Pam Bear and Fidel Baccio, who's the CEO of Bon Appetit Management Company, which is extremely innovative in the sustainable food movement. And they had this idea of creating an edible garden here at AT&T Park. So the planets aligned and it took us, you know, a good year and a half to try to put all the plans together and actually get it under construction. Okay. Um, but I think it completely exceeded our expectations about what, what we were able to and then who signs off on it and what was the conversation at, at that point in time? So Larry Bear, our CEO, thought it was a great idea. Fidel Baccio, who's one of our partners here in our food service, thought it was a great idea and they just came together and pulled together the appropriate staff and said, let's make it happen. And they identified the space and they found the right gardeners and the right aeroponic right, even these towers. Funny, these funny towers and I've never seen. And use much less water and right? less, obviously, real estate. So right? we, need, we don't have a lot of space here so we can grow up um, and they just came together as you know as two partners to put this together and it's just been phenomenal and the fans absolutely flock to it right that's great and how ironic that hunter pence exactly. is the guy that damages the first exactly kale, we'll which, take it uh, we'll we take need it. a few more of those yeah we need a few more today would be a good day today would be a great day uh, talk but so now let's just shift to the more general sense sure. in terms of fostering a culture of innovation mm -hmm. how does that work within the giants how, you know how do they continually come up with new and innovative things and, and really get that from the groundswell from down below well i think what it really starts at the top with the leadership from the ownership group that purchased the team 
team back in 1993 to Larry Bear, our CEO, and the management team that works with him. You know, there's no bad idea in this organization. Some fail, some succeed, some, you know, just kind of keep going. And the nice thing is that people aren't afraid to speak up and say, hey, what do you think about this idea? Or how, how can we do this different? And if you look at our organization throughout the business, from our ticketing program to our Wi-Fi program, our technology through the garden, our community programs, all of them are things, you know, if they've never been done before, we want to try them. We right. want to be the first if we can. Right. And not just to be first for first sake, but really if it's enhancing the overall fan experience and the overall community experience. That's so. great. Yeah, even the innovation continues at the garden. Uh, Bill was showing us the little slits in the exactly. center field wall so you can get the point of view of exactly. Angel Wakan when he comes back uh, <laughs> and, and, and roams in center field again. Well, Stacy, thanks a lot for coming on, great. telling us My all pleasure. about the, uh, the kale garden and the garden, and maybe later we'll fire up. They got the fire pits and everything. I feel like I'm at a, at a resort. Yes. So Jeff Rick, SiliconANGLE Network, Thanks for watching.